Have you made a lot of money out of your music? Money? I mean, what is, how, much is, how much is a lot of money to you? Yeah, that's a good question. Have, have you made, say, millions of dollars? No. Are you a rich man? What do you mean rich? What do you mean? Do you have a lot of possessions? A lot of money in the bank? Possession make you rich? I don't, I don't have that type of richness. My richness is life forever. <laughs> Smurf. Hey. <laughs> come sit, come sit, come sit next to me. Just, just, yeah. just, just oh my god, I thought he was gonna sit on me, you know. <laughs> 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 oh. So what were you guys talking about? What what are you guys talking about? What's well, happening? Uh, basically, we're just trying to like. Well, we're asking Brimo, you know, mm -hmm. what, what what was it like when he first started in the mm -hmm. industry? How were people treating him, you know, and things like that? Just your attitudes and what is it like for like a beginner in the Nigerian music industry? What is it like? Because people never talk about that. They only mm -hmm. want to talk about the success. But okay, let's know the about the hardship and how everything went, you know. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you as well? You're, you're, you're so really, you know, trying to... Lord, look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was never in so I've oh. never been in so <laughs> Um, it's difficult for everyone pretty much because me I moved to Lagos from Kaduna so it's like okay. two extremes you know yeah. Kaduna is super chill no traffic you know it's a small Kaduna city Kaduna is kind of like a turn up place I've been there as well nightlife is, is like, I like mm. it. nightlife is like wild Kaduna not necessarily Kaduna. Kaduna is if you know the right people you know the right people because you could be just there eating Roasted the arm and shit, and then everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, people from the north, they don't really eat kilishi that really much. It's like yeah. outside of But like, it's a city that's super chilled and yeah. it's quiet, except for when you have a good turn of uh, crowd. But you know, there's a different extreme to moving to Lagos from Kaduna because yeah. you're moving like from super silent to, to like, like overdrive and distortion. Was there like a culture shock for you? There was an everything shock. <laughs> the first day I came into Lagos, I sat in traffic for six hours. Oh, wow. Because uh, I was living in Apapa, so I didn't realize they picked me up from the airport. Oh, I sat God. down. I literally got frustrated. I came down. I almost took off my shirt on the road. I was like, what the <laughs> f*** is going on? Because there the weather is more, you know, cold and yeah. uh, dry. And then here it was hot and humid, so it was like two different things. Yeah. But like, uh, as opposed to music, it's just uh, Lagos is a jungle for everyone. It's like trying to do, you're fighting with everyone, literally, yeah. Lagos. Lagos is not a kind of place where you want to succeed, I want to succeed, we can join forces. It's more like a place you want to succeed automatically, you become my enemy because I'm trying to succeed mm. too in the same field. So it's like a mad jungle out there, everyone is trying to shove everyone. So it's, ah, it's Was that like the same stressful. thing for you, Raimo? Sort of like head butting heads with people, like trying to make way and everything? <laughs> I think after a while, I, I sort of got used to it. Okay. I realized that, ah, don't be mad when they disappoint you. Mm. Just wake up again and, and pick up your baggage and continue your journey. Again. And um, at some point in time, you'll find people who want to work with you. Mm. And then allies today, foes yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's like, a, and then I'm beginning to find that very exciting that I could be, that I could be a, uh, uh, out of terms with someone I was getting along with yesterday, True. today, you mm -hmm. know. So I, I sort of find that very exciting. Like right. my friend yesterday, could just come today and be like, "I want this now." I'd be like, "I don't want that. I want surprise, something else." Surprise, we're not friends anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. surprisingly, we are not friends anymore. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I find that very exciting because tomorrow the same person will find something they want to do with me again. And come back. And then we can now become friends again. Mm. I think it's, it's one of the key ingredients of a stable, constantly progressive society. Yeah, I was about to say, don't yeah, you think yeah, that it's I just think, a part of human society? Yeah, for I think most of, most of the countries we think are progressive are moving forward. I think it, it happens because the people yes. there stay there, yeah. whether they are making enemies or friends. Right. They That's continue true. to stay, in, stay at home, and continue to struggle with the process and continue to make the best that it could yeah. with, the, with the situation. That's cool. I think nice. it's like that in every industry. I'm going to say like, even in the corporate world, because I've, I've had the opportunity even in the corporate world for a while, vicious, huh? and it's, it's so vicious. It's yeah. like, 
corporate world. Only enough for those who seem that way, you know. What? 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 It's, what? Sir, it's something called Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I, just, I remember when I was interning. Survival of the fittest. It was like, every, like, people were just trying to sabotage each other. Each other. Yeah. In order yeah. to get to the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, for instance, in, 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 in Nigeria, one of the highest, one of the most popular trends is that when I become a big musician, I look for other upcoming artists yep. and put, put, them them my, along. put them under my umbrella. Uh -huh. Whether I sign them directly or they're yeah. just my friends uh -huh. sure. or I as much as tweet at them. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So uh, well, when that happens, all of the people that I, ex that I reach out to and I support to make them grow, they are actually contributing to my mm -hmm. status. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they are supposed to be individual brands. Mm -hmm. And when I give them props, when I respect and identify with them, and I'm a bigger brand, these customers, the audience, they start to see me as larger than life. True. Because they look at me like, this guy is a real... Yeah. He's a great guy. Superhero he, guy. He, he respects his other people. Yeah. So it, it sort of adds to my to my my levels. And and uh, so over time a lot of artists knew that. So they sign younger artists under their umbrella. So that's like a technique rather. But it's a technique. And I will not do that because I realize that when I sign someone, they are now contractually bound to me. Mm -hmm. True. When they finally realize that the that public that the public underrates them and puts them under my umbrella, they will want to leave. Yeah. When they want to leave, it should be easy for them for to them leave. For them to leave, that's, that's a big issue. As soon as I sign them into a contract, it becomes so a problem because see. now they have to fight that contract. Right. True. But naturally, every musician gets to a point where he realizes that the bigger nothing. artist he was affiliating with was actually putting him under. Mm. And then he will want to stand alone. Mm. So it should be easy for people to but stand alone. But why is it alone. that they don't make it easy for people to want to leave? Because I feel like it's a natural thing for people to want to leave, for them to want to change. Growth. Well, change yeah. change is natural, Business. but human nature, it, it's, a, it's a very complicated um, process to go from a, a situation of comfort to where you have to now start thinking again mm -hmm. of your comfort. Of your so I, I have you, you make me look good. People praise me because of you. So why should I have to start all over again and look for someone else right. to make me right. feel that way when I have you? So I want to keep you. And here you are insisting you want to leave. Like, that's not going to work. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm troubled if I'm not very intelligent. You know, mm. you know, like something happened after 2012 to 2018. A lot of us left record labels. So afterwards, uh, newer musicians are becoming smarter. I think I would like to give a lot of props to Olamide for something he did. Uh, the Lil Keshis and the Dickley Le Golds, they left him and he made little or no noise about it. Yeah, he just true. let it happen quickly, easily. You know, that's legendary. Yep. If you ask me, that's a legendary move. Mm -hmm. You know, he just let other people go and let them start on their own. Things, yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. you know, that because it's a difficult thing to let other people go. Which is why when you check out like uh, white musicians, uh, European, American, Caucasian uh, celebrities and musicians, they don't even sign anybody. Some of them go their careers 25, 30 years. Yep. You will never hear yeah, any. Sorry. They don't yeah. affiliate yeah. or yeah. enter a contract yeah. or en do anything with another artist. Mm -hmm. It's just me, myself, and I. Nice. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But because our society is not prepared for that, when, you're st when you stand alone, people judge you. Yep. You're selfish. You're, you're self centered. You're greedy. Mm -hmm. you, are, you don't appreciate what God has given you. You don't want oh, to give it to people. other people. <laughs> Yeah, so people do that. So we are not we are not ripe enough for what they do out there. So for now, all I do is I reach out to musicians who are doing great. I listen to their music and I tweet it. I when I Just when I can give them promotion when I can publicity. afford it, I get them on my gigs. Okay. So if I can afford it, I let them know. I cannot afford you, but I would like to, you to be on my gig. I mean, Scatter Vibration did me a very great honor, True. and they, they they came through for my Terraculture gig in 2017 with no payment yeah. yeah nice and that was one of the things that actually boosted and helped that situation and i probably could could have been parting with twenty thousand dollars for that but i got it for free mm. you know so when that happens uh it's special for me so when scatter vibration is doing something on their own i i do not have any accolades any risk anything to gain from that 
but I was more than happy that my fans got to see them at my show. Yeah. So that was my way of helping. Uh Hey, Tosa, please, 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 please. Sorry, guys. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, look at you. Don't worry about me, baby. Holla, holla. Hi. Hey. Hey. What are you guys talking about? Yeah, we're, we're just talking about music and how uh, indie music has been on the rise lately because certain key players in the industry have decided to put uh, young people who are doing well on to so, you know showcase them and then how uh, there's a kind of a dynamic now to what the music uh, sector is looking like mm -hmm. yeah, like i totally agree you know because um i feel like the whole indie or like they call it the new way and uh, it pretty much started like two years ago properly two three years two three years yeah. ago yeah. and um it was a bit difficult for people to break in at first you know how you move into a new school a new primary school yeah. as a kid and everyone there is like, okay, you are new in our class, but we don't really trust you. You don't know the, the new guy. you don't know you are the new guy. Yeah. So everyone will just do as much as they can to test you. True. And if you pass the test, you're one of us. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's how it kind of works here as well. What I've noticed, you know, a lot of indie artists, you know, independent. So indie is independent. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing everything on your own. Yeah. Here no is, backing. yeah, it's no backing. Yeah. So yeah. An easy yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really, really and really I, I think as well, these uh, established artists sometimes they find indie artists to be some sort of uh, competition, or they are kind of are intimidated by them because they know these guys are equally talented, if not even more talented, mm -hmm. and there's so much potential in them. And then, mm. as opposed to making a business move, like saying, "Okay, you know, what can I do to support yeah. you?" Just so when you are on and you become a major thing. You can always turn and say, ah, oh, this guy put me on, and then you know yeah. it was. Uh, that's why, if not for anything, I really used to like more heat. Okay. Because you know they had uh, the bands who was already big and all that, and then yeah, somewhere yeah, along when the band's career was tanking, they put the bands on a song with like uh, the Prince when the Prince yeah. was the thing, and the same thing they did with One Day. So it was like uh, you rub my back, I rub yeah, your back yeah. kind of yeah. thing, which is what you know the music business generally should be. Should be but, about yeah. Like look for the indie artists as well, like. Something I noticed, um, since most of them are going through the same plight, yeah. you know, they've like come up like, you know, banded together. Yeah. yeah. And have become like a movement. So they're like, they yeah. have like different it's gigs. Like resistance. When you put, yes. So when you outcast so many people and the outcast they form their own. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, so that's it's, going on. It's kind of how the, the industry has shaped them to be now. So you have a bunch of, you know, people who no one else wants, they all want themselves and then they've been able to create some sort of an audience for themselves True. so they cannot mm. be ignored. For me, that was coming from, say, the inner suburbs of Lagos. I didn't have anything to sell. I didn't know who I was. Okay. I just had all of this Nigerian-ness with me, Yoruba parents and and ghetto affiliation. I was Nigerian to, to the core. core. So when I came into the industry and I, I met, I came to Chocolate City, I wanted to just make music. I didn't realize that I needed to pay rent and buy cars mm -hmm. and wear lovely clothes because I am not from a home where these things were available. Right. My father never drove a car. Yeah. so. So I didn't know the value of a car and lovely clothes and trips abroad and everything. I'd never been abroad. I've never, I'd never traveled abroad, you know. So I came to Chocolate City as someone who just wanted to sing. All about the music. I just wanted to sing my heart out. Mm -hmm. All of my life, I've been plagued with the promise of death. So here I was with an opportunity to sing. And I said, I am going to sing and I'm going to bring the whole world to my mother so that when I die, like my auntie said I was going to, everybody will be like, I would die for a purpose. Right. That was all that, was, that mattered to me. I didn't understand what I was doing. So I came to the music industry and please, Emaya Baga did quite, no, that's what I'm saying. Quite, yeah, he did quite, okay at the beginning. He did so much for the music industry, yeah, for did. the culture yeah. of creativity in Nigeria. And finally for me, you know, so he was on TV and he said, I like this guy and his video is my number five favorite video. And I had never seen him before. 
and that was a fame I enjoyed for three months. No, Google Michael, people were like, you know, am I? <laughs> Guy, how do you know am I? Am I talk about you? Am I talk, I, like 10 people already told me what he said right, before, before I finally you, saw the video. Yeah. So I'd never known him. Now, Den Relay was the one who actually told him, I know the guy. I can connect you with him. Nice. And Denrelay was the one who called. He has the connections. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And Denrelay. He's, he's, like, he's our best friend. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's your best friend? friend. Oh, uh, he's a friend of the house. Uh, then, he's our then best I, I, I need to have, I need to find a different role for him then, <laughs> <laughs> because he's a little more than that for me. You know. Right. So he told him, I said, I know the guy. So he called my manager. He knew my manager, and he said, Amazing. somebody wants to talk to your artist. In fact, he called me himself and said. You know Chocolate City? You know M.I.? I said, yes. I said, I said, what? He said, yes. I said, M.I. is my favorite rapper. He said, yes. And he likes you. They want to work with you. Wow. In fact, to me, it felt like just a single, just mm -hmm. a, a feature. And then it became oh. uh, a, record, a record deal, you know. So at the end of the day, all I'm going to say is all that transpired between myself and Chocolate City was, uh, uh, how do I put it? All that transpired is the reason I am who I am today. Mm. I'm fighting the battles that you are fighting. against the government, the music industry, the distributors, the artist managers, and even my colleagues. Right. All that give birth to this now because uh, there were a lot of things that even Chocolate City could not walk around. Wow. There are a lot of things that this industry disrupts record label functions against like it, it, it's just impossible for record labels to function completely because of how the market structure is yes. like for instance when you talk to the distributor in alaba and you say why are you selling my album for 18 era cd music packaging pictures graphics everything that makes up this cd you sell it for 80 16 era why and it tells you people are poor people cannot afford it and i say in the same country where the price of crude oil, of petrol products has gone up every Countless year times, for yeah. the next 10 years, where the price of uh, transportation has gone everything. up every year Dude, for the ten, last 10 years, everything has gone up. Why can't the price of cities go up? Mm. Yeah. And then they tell you, one. we are sorry, but people are poor. Mm. People cannot afford it. So they insist that the price of cities more is remain that way, up to the point that now that we sell albums online, the digital platforms are also selling for 150. True. How can you be selling a Nigerian album for less than 50 cents? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when in South Africa, in South Africa, my album will go for 4,000 naira. In the US, it will go for almost 4,000 naira. Everywhere so else, the price of music goes up because somebody sits and writes these lyrics, yeah. composes the music. Yeah. Somebody so sits, musicians come together and play the guitar, play the drums, play everything, and then we have this music together. And then I put it out, and you want to sell for 80 bucks. Like you said, no way, it doesn't augment your label in any it's way. Not. And then the, 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 the guy who sells the music in traffic makes more profits than that me. You, you the a copy artist. of album yeah. sold. True, true, uh, true. Ridiculous. Because so, the, the, uh, a lot of people, they buy it at a wholesale. Yeah, price. and then it sells for 200 naira in traffic. How many copies they can produce? Exactly. They exactly. produce till yeah, yeah. yeah, the money is constantly turning yeah. over. So, you know, so it, it, it was a, a difficult situation that I had to pull out of. Mm. It was like having sex with a girl who was never going to raise your kid well. So I said, <laughs> so I said, I said, I said, I said, yo, I am pulling out of this. And then everybody said, you cannot pull out of it. I'm like, why can't I pull out of it? I did not come here for you. I came here to make music. And you know what? I am going to make this music. So, so like, if they actually reach out to you tomorrow, if Chocolate City reaches out to you tomorrow and want you to come back to finish what you started, would you go back? What did I start? The revolution. <laughs> the revolution of good music, man. Well, the, the revolution is on. You know this is the beauty of a revolution. I didn't start what I started just so that I could be a messiah. I don't want to be a messiah. Mm. I just want to make profit, take care of my kids, and let them continue where I had stopped. Mm. I have no interest in being anybody's savior. I don't want to save you. All I want to do is start a conversation. Mm. And these days, when I drive around Lagos in my taxi, I just go, <laughs> look what I have started. <laughs> I am so happy. Because so many people are coming out and demanding their rights right. yes. as musicians and telling these mainstream people that no, 
People love what we do. People love it. And Brimo is doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's working. It's not buying him a, a 2016 range. No. It's not flying him to Mars. No. But he's a man. And he wakes up every morning and he puts out these albums. Mm. And he leaves. And he gigs. And he sells records. <laughs> yep. And it's funny that you say this because when we came for your concert, because we're supposed to be the opening act, Scatter Vibration, after we sound check, we're backstage like this, waiting, waiting. I look through the curtain from the backstage. I'm like, ah, there's not too many people. I'm like, ah, what's happening? What's happening? And then your manager comes out back. I'm like, dude, what's going on? Where's everyone? He's like, hold on. Have you seen the lobby? I'm like, no, I haven't seen the lobby. He's like, just wait. <laughs> and do you know, when the lady goes on stage and she says, Scatter Vibration, and I open that curtain and I what come out, it? there was no, like literally there was no space. <laughs> I just saw people everywhere. And I told Douglas, I said, he touched me in a place I haven't been touched before because I felt like all these people, like Terracotta sold out because of Brimo. And mm. Brimo is not your average everyday whiz kid or Davido. Brimo yeah. is that person that your parents listen to. And people came out, young people, old people. So it was this amazing thing. I'm like, so these people were willing to put their hands in their pocket and pay money for Brimo to the point where there was no space to have any more of these people. We're like this, I'm performing, there's so much energy in the audience and I saw a bit of a stage on top of the stage, so I went there, I'm performing from up there and I look at everybody. At the end of the performance, I was so riled up, I'm like, shit. And I just jumped. And when I leaped from the top stage, I didn't realize how far it was until I was descending, I'm like, <laughs> what? This is so far. Yeah, I jumped from the drummer stage down to the main stage. And then when I landed, everywhere was quiet because people were like, okay, people did, he, him to did he break something? Did he break yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, that's and what I was thinking. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so that's what it is. So each team, each team member has to take a shot. Like all three of you have to take a shot. Oh, if, no. if you miss, yes, it's not one person. All yeah, this three is a of team you. So it's a team effort. Somebody answers, fails, and everybody. Drinks. Everybody takes a shot. Yeah. Wow. So, so it's all on the to, team. Yes. Yeah, so so we can, can, can we sort of? Get yeah, you guys have to collectively get the answer. Oh, okay. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, Yeah. Is this all? So they pulling me back, me back? Ah, no. 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 Okay. Right. So, uh, <coughs> should we tell them the answer? Should we tell them the answer? Yes, you guys have to. Once you get it, say it. We should not pour your drink. Yes. We can't. Because that's not the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, go ahead. Oh my god. Me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Apparently, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, who is the bartender? <laughs> No, you guys have to give an answer. What's up? Let's give an answer. We don't know. Yeah. So we lost. Um, music Soul Child. No. 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 And they also have a Music Soul Child. Brad Pitt. Yeah. Is that Brad Pitt? Ah. Don't you see? Don't you see? So, so, so they don't know the song. Nobody knows the song, but they're drinking. What song is that? Snoop Dogg. 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 Yeah, okay, so you know, original song, yeah, as I said. Yeah, nice. Okay, so we filled it. Yeah, so we're serving the drinks. Me. No, it's not the old drink. You can't serve your own drink. You can't serve your own drink. Oh, yeah. It's masturbation. Why? No, the other cup is there. No. I should feel it as well. Yeah, it's like very little low. You have to empty it. So are you pouring for the whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing is serious. Sorry. So I. Uh, how do we go about drinking this? It's like only communion. You, you drink it and you pass it. Yes, it's, it's like only communion. You, you, you drink it and you pass it alone. What's where? What are you? Do you guys have herpes any mouse thing? I'm not sure. Uh, I should be asking you because there's something on your lips right now. Hey! Okay. Oh my God! Okay, there's no meat on everybody's lips. Okay, okay. okay. Right, right. Yeah! Woo! I know, I know. I'm up. Come on, take it. Take it. She didn't take anything, no. Ah, next person. Yeah, next person. 